So guys, we had quite an exciting day on Friday. We did, it was um, very, very exciting. Yeah, we travelled down to Norfolk, which is where we are now, but we also went to our fertility clinic, Hearts and Essex, and we went to go and see how our surrogate was getting on. Our surrogate had a scan to see how her lining of her womb is doing. Yeah. Because um, excitingly, she started her period. Reese, Reese was literally messaging me daily, or asking me daily, and he was like, has she started it yet? Has she started it yet? Has she started it yet? And literally the day we got that text saying I've started my period, I don't think we've ever been so excited for someone's period in all yeah. our life. So she... Um, There's a nice and thick line in. Yeah, lovely and thick. <laughs> the, the nurse said that she has a lovely, lovely womb. Um, and she was like, thank you so much. And they said it's nice and quiet in there. Yeah, no activity going on. Yeah, so... Basically, we have a date for transfer, a frozen embryo transfer, and that is on Friday the 25th of November, which is just wild. It's less than a week. I know. It's exciting. Scary. So, so scary. exciting. Like, but really exciting. We're, we're just trying to be very positive and excited about this, like, this time round, because yeah. I feel like with the journey to getting Hugo, we oh my, I, were just I, so unexcited for everything. Everything was just nervous and nerve wracking. I think you just always thought the worst, yeah. didn't you? You always yeah. did. And to be fair, that, that does linger in the back of your head still. Yeah. But it's just about trying to be happy for that new journey. Yeah. And obviously seeing everything that Hugo's been able to give us mm. and the happiness it, that we have from him. Yeah. I just want that same happiness. Yeah. So um, it'd be nice to just enjoy this experience a bit more. So we will keep you posted with how we go and fingers crossed, speak to you soon with some good news. Yeah. So um, today's a very exciting day. It is Friday the 25th of November and it is Black Friday, but that's not why we're excited. <laughs> Definitely not. We are excited because today is our transfer day. Um, so it feels very real. And today is the day that obviously our surrogate and us are going to go to the clinic and hopefully Tatum number two is going to be transferred and we could be on the way to having another little one. I oh, know, which is so surreal. That is so it's surreal. mad. Um, so it's a frozen embryo transfer, so the embryo has to thaw. So this morning the embryologist went into Hearts and Essex Fertility Centre and they have got out our one last remaining embryo and they're thawing it literally as we speak so in the next hour or so we should get a call to let us know whether the thaw has been successful or not so yeah literally keeping everything crossed it feels mad that we're doing this again it's just crazy i've literally forgotten all of the stuff that we have done last time i know like, all the past three times but i've literally forgotten all the stuff that we ever did and it just feels like complete alien territory and yeah I'm like so excited, but I'm also excited. like there's that bit of nerves that I'm just like, oh my god! And I literally do this again. And I <laughs> not another one. You're joking. Yeah, this could be the start of baby Tatum number two. No more after that. No, I think we'll be done. <laughs> That's enough. So we're done. We're out. We are potentially going to be dads to another little one. It's absolutely mad. It is, it, it was our first time we were allowed like in, in the theatre. Yeah. Because the last time with our previous journeys, we weren't able to go in because of COVID and restrictions. Yeah. Um, so we were actually allowed in. So it was like a brand new experience this time round. It was really weird, but yeah, amazing. Were, the team there, I honestly cannot fault them. They are honestly, incredible. they are, all they, the, all the doctors and nurses. Yeah. Literally phenomenal. Everything is like checked, checked and checked again, cross-checked and made sure that it's perfect. Have sent our surrogate and her husband home um, to babysit for the next eight or so months, which is mad. We get to go back in about a week and three days for the blood test to determine whether the pregnancy test is positive or not. And until then, it's just a waiting game. Ah! Very surreal. It's so, so, so surreal. So we have just been for a blood test, haven't we? And we're gonna yeah. find out whether your brother or sister is on its way, aren't we? Aren't we? Yeah. You go for a blood test at 8.30 in the morning yeah. and then you will find out in the evening, uh, well, late afternoon, early evening, whether 
you are pregnant or not. So we are off to our surrogate's house to wait with bated breath. Yeah. Wish us luck. As you know, we had the pregnancy test. Um, they like the levels to be anything over five, I believe it is. But ideally, they want it to be like over 100. Yeah. And we were at 180, which means we are pregnant. We're pregnant. Yeah. Mad. It's, it's weird. So our surrogate was having all of the symptoms of pregnancy. Like yeah. she was feeling sick already, which is amazing. But again, a lot of the medicines and drugs can make you feel that way. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So always going into it, it's torture. But we literally went from, we got the blood test in the morning at half eight, didn't we? Yeah. Um, and then we drove back to her house with her, picked up her kids from school, sat at hers with her husband and her had kids, dinner. had dinner, and then we got the call. And all of us, like, their girls, us, were just jumping around buzzing. Like, yeah. it, it's so mad. It literally took, like, from 8 o'clock in the morning all the way until about 5 p.m. or something like yeah, that. Yeah, because they've got to send the blood off to, like, a private lab to yeah. go and get the levels tested. Yeah, so they've got a... They've got. They. I think they take them to London. Is it? Yeah, I think they get. I think they get like on a like a little motorcycle. Yeah, take them to London. So we found out we are pregnant. Obviously, it's four weeks and two days, so it's very early days, and we know that we're not in the clear yet, and we completely understand that, and we want to be as level-headed as possible. Yeah, but we also want to kind of enjoy it. Yeah. And just... I think you should enjoy it. I think... Yeah. I mean, there's always something in the back of your head, or I don't know, like yours, but I'm... Like mine, in the back of my head, there's always something going. Like, just don't get too excited. Like, yeah. just calm down a little bit. It's but... still really early days. Like, it's four weeks and... Well, four weeks and three days now. For now, we're pregnant. Which means that Hugo's going to be a big brother. I just can't imagine him. I think he'll be a good big brother, but I can also think he's going to be like one of those big brothers that teaches them mischievous things just because oh, he, so, he is so cheeky like, 100% so cheeky. hey everyone so um haven't done an update in a while because everything was going well everything was going swimmingly we are six weeks pregnant today and we woke up to a message from our lovely surrogate and she said that she and she has been bleeding slightly now it's nothing that's too worrying or concerning with our last pregnancy with Hugo um, our surrogate actually bled all the way up until about 16 weeks um, and some of it was quite severe and heavy it sometimes can just be to the amount of hormones that the surrogate is having to take and then the natural body just getting a bit vascular down there and is I don't know the science terms Reese is better with them than I am but and she is six weeks and unfortunately we can't have a seven week scan which we usually would have within the clinic because they're shut for Christmas. We have to wait until about I think it's eight weeks and four days to actually go for a scan which is a long time to wait considering we found out at four weeks and two days that we were actually pregnant. So our surrogate and her husband are going to the scan today and we will see how that goes. I'm not too concerned because Touch wood. Touch wood. I'm not too concerned because of the last experience we've had and we know that this is a sort of side effect of the medication, um, but it is scary nonetheless. I think for the surrogate, she was very scared um, when it initially happened, uh, but there hasn't been any bleeding. There hasn't been any bleeding since this morning. So hopefully it was just a one-time thing, a surge of hormones and we're all good. But we should know by about half three today what the update is. Reese has taken Hugo out on a drive and I'm just pacing up and down. I don't think Reese realized that the scan was happening at 3.30. I mean, he did know, but you know, like sometimes when your baby just starts crying and you just think, oh my God, I just got to get you to sleep. So he's taking you in the car for a drive. So I'm just pacing up and down the house. It'll be fine. It will be fine. It will be fine. Positive mental attitude. It will be fine. We're going to get a call in a bit. Everything's fine. We're going to see our baby for the first time. It's all going to be good. So Reese is back just in time. And we've just been told that the little brother or sister that you're going to have is absolutely fine. Aren't they? Where they should be. 
looking like a little piece of phlegm. So that's good, isn't it? You ready to be a brother yet? Uh. So it is New Year's Eve. We're about to say goodbye to 2022. And in 2023, Hugo here is going to become a big brother. Uh. Aren't you? Uh. Yes, you are. Fingers crossed, eh? So, we have come home from Norfolk early. We've left Hugo in Norfolk with my mum and dad, not just on his own. On Thursday, we have our pregnancy scan. Usually, with our clinic at least, you have like a seven week scan. Yeah. But we were seven weeks pregnant on the... On Christmas Day. Yeah. So we were seven weeks pregnant on Christmas Day. So obviously, the clinic weren't open. They were um, shut. Our clinic shut over Christmas. The earliest they could give us an appointment is at eight weeks and four days, which yeah. is Thursday the 5th of January. I think it feels really weird, the fact that we are waiting until eight weeks and four days yeah. to see the baby. So like, obviously the surrogate had her scare and her and her husband went to go and see that everything was fine and everything was fine. Thank God, touch wood. Um, but... <laughs> I think because I haven't, or we haven't personally seen, we haven't gone to that scan. We haven't no. sp spoken to the, to the um, like professionals, like the medical. People. Yeah, it's just. I think I think it still doesn't feel real just yet. It doesn't feel real, even though we've, like we've seen the pictures and we're like, oh, okay, like fine. But because we haven't been there and seen the scan in person, yeah. This time round, like our surrogate lives so much further away. So like before, yeah. our surrogate was super close. However, now it's like. Our surrogate's two hours away. Like, it yeah. just... It feels... I think because you can't just pop down the road and you can't just be like, oh, how are you doing? La, 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 la. Yeah. Like, as much as you want to, it's just not practical because she's two hours away and, like, we've got Hugo now as well and work's really busy and Christmas was manic as well and yeah. you were ill. You don't have as much free time. The experience this time around is so different, but luckily we do talk to her like every single day. Yeah. The good thing is, is that she's still like having all of like the, the normal pregnancy symptoms. Yeah. Like I know that she's on the meds, but also like that she's still getting like that sickness feeling. Yeah. She's still like today absolutely she... tired. Yeah. She just, it, like it's good. Like I'm glad that I'm glad she feels like yeah. that. But like today, so she went out for breakfast with her husband this morning, um, and she messaged us, and she was like, "I've literally just vomited my entire breakfast up," and nice. we were like, "Good." <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like in the nicest way possible. Yeah. Good, because it it means that there's something going on there. Part of me thinks it's quite toxic because the fact that you're it's drummed in you from such a young age. Don't be happy until twelve weeks. Yeah, and I think. If we hadn't gone through what we'd already gone through before yeah. with attempt number two when we were having Hugo, I don't think we would feel as nervous and apprehensive. Yeah. People that don't know, so like with attempt number two, uh, Hugo was attempt number three. Um, attempt number one, there was an unsuccessful transfer. So we got to the blood test day at like four weeks and two days and it was unsuccessful. It was a negative pregnancy test. Um, the second time round, we were pregnant. We got to seven weeks and it was, um, everything was fine. Everything was growing right. And then we went for the 10 week scan, which is when the clinic would discharge you and you get discharged to the NHS within the UK. We were told that there wasn't a heartbeat. And at about eight or nine weeks, the baby had stopped growing. And it was probably due to something like a liver, kidney or heart problem. So that was hard to go yeah. through. I think we always have in the back of our heads, like the nervousness of that appointment. Yeah, um, I agree. But equally, since then, we have had Hugo. We have had positive appointments. Mm. Part of us really just wants to enjoy this experience this time round Because yeah. with Hugo, we had... A lot of anim not animosity. What's the word? Animosity. Yeah, no. animosity. Yeah, we had a lot of animosity, and we were just very nervous throughout the experience. I think any scan, I don't think we enjoyed it. Yeah. Whereas I think and this I, time round, and don't get me wrong, I don't think every single pregnancy is is a simple ride. Like pregnancy no. is it, it's a lot. Like it's, yeah. it is not an easy thing to go through. The thing is for us as well because we aren't growing that human being. Like and. With a surrogate, you've sort of got to find that... You've sort of got to find that safe ground of 
what can you ask? What can't you ask? What can you do that's not yeah. going to smother them? Like, yeah. I don't want to message every single morning you and say, too much. are you pregnant? Do you feel ill? Do you this? Do you that? La, 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 la. So usually it's just like day-to-day conversation and then sometimes she'll be like, oh my God, I feel so sick. Do you know what I mean? It's like yeah. that sort of stuff. And then it's like, okay, cool, good. I'm kind of glad and you've put my mind at rest. But I think we're quite lucky that Asaruga is so open and honest about everything yeah. and she's very happy to send pictures of anything. Yeah. Um, and we do have like such a good connection and bond with her, which is amazing because I think we're quite open and honest people. We're Definitely. quite... We're an open book when it comes to things like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, like we're not like prudes or we don't shy away from like certain topics. So no. it's like... I think we're quite lucky that we have found Definitely. a surrogate that is happy to be open and honest. Any heterosexual couple going to be going home to their partner after work and they're going to be able to check in and be like, yeah. oh, like, how are you doing today? Like, how are you feeling? Yeah. Like, that general just, like, connection of just catching up with your partner when you get home from work. Like, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, you can do that via your phone and you can call, your, like, we can call our surrogate, but it being in person, it's mm. a, it is a different experience. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's another, that, not struggle, but it's just a different... I think I think it's just, it's... You do just... In, in the first 12 weeks, you're nervous and you're anxious because it's been drummed into you that you have to be nervous and anxious for some reason. Um, and then apparently once you get past 12 weeks, you're safe and you can yell it from the rooftops. Which again, still isn't the case because no, no pregnancy is safe until that baby has been delivered and that baby is breathing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, part of me wants to yell it from the rooftop before 12 weeks, but then also, you can't. That Do you know thing what I mean? inside it's, of you is like, it's no, so, just wait, just wait. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, I think it is nice to wait, because even though they're saying, oh, like, your safety blanket's 12 weeks, yeah. it, when you tell people, and you've waited for so long to tell people, it is so nice, it does, it yeah. does make it so special. Because you've wanted to for so long. I think as well, like, again, with it being a surrogacy, I feel that if we were to tell people before that safe zone of 12 weeks, it puts a lot of pressure on the surrogate. Yeah. Which is why we haven't mentioned her name yet, which is why we haven't publicly spoken about her or anything like that. And if anyone ever asks, like, are you going to have a second child or anything like that? Yes, we'd love to. And God willing, fingers crossed, this one works out. But again, you just you don't want to add any stress or any anxiety Mm. on top of someone else. She's already probably got enough anxiety knowing that she is carrying someone else's baby for them. She doesn't need, like, potentially thousands of other people hounding her and being like, are you pregnant? How are you feeling? La, 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 la. It's going to be overwhelming. Yeah, that would be overwhelming for me, so... So I just think, like, we want to share this journey as much as possible, which is why we're doing this, like, vlog of the journey... But obviously the vlog of the journey wouldn't go live until we are public with it. Do you know what I mean? It's a really weird process to go through. And I think like everyone navigates it differently and like hats off to people that can be so public and open about their journey because it's going to help a lot of people doing it that way. Definitely, definitely. But also like the anxiety and nervousness in me is just like, no, not doing it. Can't can't do that. So basically we have our scan on Thursday at 11am. And that's that. That's that. God, it literally makes me feel sick thinking about it. I know. So it is pregnancy scan day, eight weeks and four days today. Um, feeling very nervous, but also very excited. I've just pulled up to the clinic. Reese and our surrogate and her husband are already in there. Um, time to go in. Hopefully, I'll be back in a bit with some good news. So guys, I just got home from the appointment. It was a good one. Um, we are eight weeks and four days pregnant. The doctor had a good look around. Um, as obviously it's still an early stage pregnancy, you have to sort of do like an internal probe, would you call it? Basically they did an internal scan. We saw our baby. It's a good size. It's measuring well. Um, his little heart was flickering away. Don't know why I'm getting emotional. Um, no, don't, because I'm really an ugly crier. Um, um, yeah, we are. So here is the little baby. Wow. 
We're going back in a few weeks, um, two weeks today actually, so it will be 10 weeks and four days. We're gonna go for one more scan, just to make sure everything's good and everything's still where it wants to be. I mean, the clinic did say today, because they've seen a good heartbeat and because we're past eight weeks, they would be happy to discharge us today. But I think just through like fears and worries and things like that, we do just want to go back one last time before they sign us off, before we go for a 12 week scan anywhere, and just make sure that everything's where it's meant to be and everything's good. Um, at 10 weeks, our clinic also offer the NIPT test. Um, so I think it's called the NIPT test. Um, so yeah, the NIPT is sort of, I believe it's non-invasive prenatal testing. Um, so it's just a blood test in the arm, I think. So it can test for things like uh, Down syndrome, Edwards syndrome, and another one beginning with a P, Pat, um, Patows, Patours. I think it's like Patows syndrome or something like that. And then it can test for a few other things just to sort of check what is going on. And it could also detect the sex of the baby. We don't use the word gender because we just don't. We determine, uh, you determine the sex of the baby. So you'd be able to find out whether it has like male or female reproductive organs. We don't want to find that out. We didn't find out with Hugo and it was the loveliest and most amazing surprise and just a great way to guess throughout the pregnancy. And so we're probably not gonna find out this time. If for some reason we have to find out or we accidentally find out during a scan or something like that, then so be it. But we are gonna try our best to not find out. As long as that baby is happy and healthy, who cares what it's got down there? Do you know what I mean? So that's our next step. The next one is the 10 week scan. We're actually going back to Norfolk this weekend. We left Hugo down there with my mum and dad, his granny and gramps, just for a couple of days because we had work and all this that, and the other. We've explained it before on one of these vlogs, but we're going back and um, we're probably not gonna vlog whilst we're down there because we are going to Norfolk with our surrogate and her family. So we're just gonna have a nice time, just switch off, enjoy each other's company and celebrate the fact that we are eight weeks and four days pregnant. I don't think it's sunk in just yet. I don't. It's mad. <sighs> now I'm gonna go again, stop. So uh, we've literally just got to our appointment on time. It's our 10 week, four day scan. I mean, we're running late, so I don't have time to talk, but. So, I mean, you can probably tell where the smile on our faces. Um, <laughs> The appointment went pretty well. The baby is measuring 10 weeks, four days, which is exactly perfect. Where it needs to be. Lovely brain. Any of the like doctors and nurses we showed like the scan picture to, they were like, oh, nice brain. brain, nice brain. So that is hopefully good. Great brain, um, great cross section of the brain. Yeah, um, good spine. spine. All the limbs. All the limbs, little fingers as well. It was so weird seeing the little fingers. So weird. It's, it, it's measuring about four centimeters, which that's tiny. What's that like that? If that, that. Four centimetres? A bit less than that. Do you think? Yeah. yeah. That's about an inch, that is. Anyway, yeah, so, so far, so good. We have officially been discharged from Hearts and Essex Fertility Centre. Probably. We were just saying it, it's actually quite bittersweet because they are the loveliest clinic yeah. ever. Um, like It's probably the last time we will ever go to the Hearts and Essex Fertility Centre now for, for treatment. any treatment. Like obviously we'll visit and we'll bring Hugo and the little one and, but yeah, it's just, that is a really weird feeling. Yeah. That really we're weird, like, do you know what I mean? They've been in our lives since like 2019. We'll still go back and we'll still visit them and still speak mm, to them. Yeah, of course. But yeah, but they've been in our lives since like 2019. So that's like, like what? four years of your life, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. mental. Um, but yeah, so all is good, all measuring good. We did the NIPT, um, the... NIPT test, yeah. Yeah, the NIPT thing that I explained about earlier. We've got to wait about 10 to 14 days for that. So we'll, we'll know in about two, two and a half weeks because it's working days, obviously. Yeah. It's got to go all the way over to France. Is it France? Got yeah, to all the way over to France. Wee oui, wee. Oui. So, <laughs> um, that is that. Yeah. Love it. We are 12 weeks pregnant today. And I don't really know. I don't really know how I feel. I, like, I feel nervous. I feel good. I just always feel sick. Like we're, we're, basic, good. we're basically going for a scan today. We're going for a 12 week scan because we want to start telling people because 
12 weeks is a long time to wait. I mean, in surrogacy terms, it's not even 12 weeks, is it? It's like six and a half mm. weeks. No, not even that, five and a half weeks, because when the embryo is put in, obviously, like it's three weeks and a couple of days or whatever. We've waited five and a half weeks to tell people, but oh, it's just, it is such. It, it's so horrible not being able to speak yeah. about it to people, especially like your closest friends. Like you want to speak about what you're going through, what's happening. When we've seen friends recently, we've literally just been like, oh my God, I want to burst. Like you literally, literally. just want to be like, ha, we're having a baby. But obviously you can't do that. Um, well, I mean, you can, but we just have chosen not to. Um, obviously, like we explained earlier, for our surrogate's sake and just mm. so she's not stressed. We are about to go in for the appointment for the 12-week scan so we can start telling people. Um, but yeah, I just, it's always a nerve-wracking experience. Mm. I think every scan always will be, even right up until the last, last minute. Like, it, it's a nerve wracking, it is a nerve wracking experience. I think pregnancy itself is yeah. a nerve wracking experience. And then experience. when the baby comes, it's a nerve wracking experience. Yeah. And then, you know. Keeping them alive. Yeah. Basically, what have we signed up for? We're going to go into the appointment now and then spending the day with the surrogate and her family. Yeah. Which is going to be lovely. So, yeah, we will be back soon to hopefully show you a picture of baby Tatum number two. That's mad. Little baby. About this big now. I don't know how big it is actually. Yeah. I think last week it was four centimetres, so it can't be like much longer than that. Lime. Big as a lime. That's quite big. How big is it? A lime. As big as a lime. A lime's pretty big. Or as big as the Jurassic Park amber cane handle. I don't know what that is. Or as big as a hacky sack. a hacky sack. That's pretty big. Or an American snooker ball. Snooker ball, yeah. Wow. An Oreo. Oh. Wow, that's mad. The little baby. That's mad. Got the green light. Wow. It's mad. It's mad. Also, so exciting. Like, I we're literally cannot wait to yeah, see people. Yeah, we're literally driving to your parents tomorrow to tell them. Yeah. Yeah. Buzz it. Mad. We're about to have a week of just telling people we're having a baby and watching their reactions and filming it all because I think they're just really special memories to keep. Oh, 100%. Literally, like, it's just so nice to look back and just see everyone's reactions yeah. and see how happy they are. And it's just that, that genuine moment of I think, happiness. I think so many people are going to be shocked as well, though. Like, I don't I think don't, a lot of people were expecting it. No, I don't think people expect it to happen this quickly for us. We didn't, so I don't think other people are. No. Now we just got to work out how to tell everyone. Oh. See you guys soon. <laughs>